Street is just loaded with Roman houses. It's only a few blocks from here. How do I get there? When you go out of the station, turn right uh, three blocks. You can't miss it. Well, thanks a lot. Anytime, miss. before had it for almost two years. She'd still be here if she hadn't got married to a man who got transferred to Milwaukee. Gee, I must remember to have that fixed. Well, how do you like it? It's lovely. How much? Of course, it's a little hard to judge now, but when you get your own things around, it'll make a big difference. Okay, you sold me. How much? Six dollars in advance. You get uh, clean linens and towels once a week. Bass down the hall. Try to take it easy on the lights. Mm -hmm. By the way, what's your name? Billy Nash. I'm Mrs. Walter. Gee, I hate to take your luck, kid. Tell you what, I'll save it for you and you can give me a bill for it. Do me a favor and get rid of it. All the luck that's brought me shouldn't happen to a dog. Well, it's up to you. What you do is your own business. But I run a respectable house. And don't forget, every week in advance.
Hi. I see we're going to be neighbors. That's nice. I live right across the hall, so if I can ever be of any service, I'll let you know. If you've got change of a quarter, I want to make a phone call. Why? Why, well, yes, I, I think so. Yes, here we are. Thanks. You're, you're very welcome. calling about your ad for a waitress. Oh, I see. Thanks. Scratch. No luck, huh? I should have known. My horoscope said this was going to be a bad day. Could I, uh, could I offer you a glass of sherry? Oh, I don't want to interrupt your dinner. Oh, 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 please. I, I insist. Well, if you insist. It's nice having company for a change. A man gets lonesome living alone. There's nothing much you can do. Read. Listen to the radio. Take into a movie. But I don't have to explain that to you. You live alone, too. Sure. Mmm, that was good. Charlie, you're a cook. I'm glad you like it. How about another cup of coffee? No, thanks. I'm positively full. Oh, am I beat? <sighs> Why don't you stretch out in my big chair for a while and relax? I'd better be going. I have to be up in the morning to find a job. Oh, oh but it's early yet. I can hardly keep my eyes open. Some other time, Charlie. How, how about a nightcap? It'll make you sleep better. Couldn't hold another drop. Besides, I'll be asleep as soon as I hit that pillow. You've been real swell, Charlie. Thanks a lot. Oh, Billy. Then I don't entitle you to no special favors, Buster. All right. I just wanted to say that tonight's been swell, and I, I hope we can do it again soon. Why not? Good night, Billy. Good night. place in town. I just came here a few weeks ago to live with my sister. You have references? Mr. Cutler said he'd phone you. Yeah, he phoned me. Says he knows you a long time, recommends you highly. That means he knows you're weak and he's on the make. I met him today and I need the job. Well, what about references? I did the silliest thing, Mrs. Bannister. My sister just got married and I loaned her my suitcase. It had all my personal papers in it. How long would it take you to get them? Well, I really couldn't say. They're driving across the country on their honeymoon. I may not hear from them for a couple of weeks. I like to know who I'm hiring. Do you think you could possibly make an exception in this case, Mrs. Bannister? I spent all my savings on my sister's wedding, and I really need the job. Ever work in a bar before? Sure. Some bigger, some smaller. 
This pays six dollars a night in tips. That's fine with me. We get a steady trade here. They can get a little rough at times. You gotta know how to keep them in line. Be nice to them, but not too nice. I think I can handle it. That's what the last girl said. I'm not the last girl. Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Look, Mrs. Bannister, I've been knocking around ever since I was a kid. Can you start tonight, six o'clock? Sure, the sooner the better. How about a drink? Thanks. How do you want it? Same way. To women. Amen. Doll yourself up. Wear a peasant blouse and off the shoulder sweater, tight skirt. You know what they want. I'll give it to them. Say, if I'm going to be back here by six, I'd better hustle. Take it a little earlier if you can. What's your name again? Billy Nash. Well, good luck, Billy. Thanks, Mrs. Bannister. Make it, Dora. Okay, Dora. I got myself a job today. So soon? Oh, well, that's wonderful. Congratulations. I knew you'd be glad to hear about it. Look, Charlie, I'm sorry if I was a little rude last night, but I was dead tired. Oh, don't worry about it, Billy. We all get that way at times. I'll tell you what, though. I'll find out what night I get off and we'll go out and celebrate, just the two of us. Oh, you'd really do that? You, you'd go out with me? Of course I would. We'll go someplace for dinner, someplace we can dance. We'll make a big night of it. Oh, I haven't done that in ages. I'm really not even a very good dancer. Don't worry, I'll teach you all the latest steps. Sounds wonderful. Well, I've got to hurry and do some shopping, Charlie. I'll see you later. Uh -huh. Oh. What's the matter? Charlie, do you think you could loan me $20? $20? I've got to get a new outfit for the job. I'll pay back next week. Well, I don't know. I... You don't want to, just say so. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. I just don't know whether I can spare it or not. Forget it. Oh. Yeah, I, I guess I can. Here you are, Billy. Thanks a lot, Charlie. That's really swell of you. I'll pay you back next week for sure. Oh, oh don't worry about it, Billy. And uh, uh, find out how soon your night off will be, will you? Sure, Charlie. I'm the new girl, Billy Nash. Yeah, I know. Dora told me. You can hang your things in the back. Are you Mr. Bannister? Yeah. Hi, you the new girl? Yeah. I'm Gus. Hi, you Gus. I'm Billy. You ought to do all right here. I hope so. You will. Thanks. You've had some drinks before, haven't you? Sure. We got mostly a neighborhood crowd here. Steady trade. They're good drinkers, so don't rush them. Keep their drinks moving, but don't rush them. I get it. Oh, and keep the balls filled with pretzels. The more they eat, the more they drink. I will. Now, you'll have to pay me and collect for your own drink. So if any stiffs run out on you, it's your tough luck. Okay, but I don't have any money for change. Oh. Here's 20. Sign this receipt. Oh, 
I'll collect that from you tonight. Anything else you want to know? Does your wife show up here at night? Yeah. Why? Oh, I was just wondering. Let me have the pretzels, will you? How we doing? Uh, same all around. Come on, Billy, sit down. I want to talk to you. Yeah, his wife doesn't understand it. No, that's the merchandise. <laughs> Everything okay? Sure, Billy, we'll hunt her when we need you. Oh, what do you mean? I need her right now. I only advertise. <laughs> I got a feeling she could go for me. I do, too. With a brick bat. <laughs> Billy. How's it going? Fine. They're a nice bunch. You're going to be all right. They like you, I can tell. You're going to be good for business. Thanks. I hope so. Uh, Billy, get me a double shot, but don't let Matt know. Yeah. A double bourbon, two rise, and a bottle of beer. You'd think he was handing them out to his relatives. Can't expect to make anything on food. Yeah, we don't have to lose on it. I think I'll have a shot, Matt. Have one with me, Billy? No, thanks, Dora. Ah, come on. I'll pick you up. I'll take a rain check. Don't put it away, Matt. Why don't you lay off for tonight, Dora? Haven't I been a good girl? I told you I wouldn't drink during business hours. Dora. It's for your own good. Come on, be a sport. You can't leave it alone for one night, can you? Look, don't tell me what to do. If I want to drink, I'll drink. You're not getting any more. Who are you to tell me what I'm getting? This place is half mine. Every bum behind that bar is half mine. Yeah, go ahead, slop it up. Drink yourself into your grave like your old man did. Don't you dare talk about my father. Why, you owe him everything you've got. You'd still be a lousy bartender if I hadn't married you. Shut up and guzzle your booze. Don't you tell me to shut up! How do you like that, Billy? He doesn't like the stuff, so nobody else is supposed to drink it. Isn't that just like a man? Anything they want to do is all right, but a woman, oh, that's different. Leave sure. her out of this. I wasn't talking to you. You sure you won't have one? Well, don't let this big slob scare you. You feel like having a drink? You have one. They worked your little Don't do that! What are you trying to scare me to death? Oh, I'm sorry, Billy. I, I didn't mean to frighten you. Don't ever do that, Charlie. You can give somebody a heart attack. I just wanted to find out how your new job went. Oh, okay, but I... I'm so tired now. I don't want to talk about it. I want to go to bed. Did you find out what night you'd have free? What are you talking about? Well, you know, the night we're going out together. Oh, I didn't get a chance to ask about it. Hey! Hey, you two, knock it off. I gotta get some sleep. 
Ah, uh, drop dead. Don't tell me to drop dead. If you two want to hold a clamp, they go out of the ballpark. What are you trying to do, Mr. Ronnie? Wake up the whole house? If you don't want to sleep, other people do. What are you yelling at me for? Tell it to them two eggheads. What's going on up there? This is a respectable house. I'm respectable house. This place is full of fun. If you don't like the way I run this house, why don't you move out? You got a nerve to talk to your tenants that way. Well, I used to better rat traps than this is at the rest. Shut up! I'll never get to sleep. You're the one that started all this, you big clown howling your head out the side of the night. If you loud mouth, don't shut up and go back to bed. I'm coming up there and throw you out. Oh, yeah? Hi, Matt. Hi, Billy. Just the man I've been looking for. Have you got a record of Acapulco Nights? Yeah, I think I got one in the car. That's a real dud, though. Haven't had much luck with it. Ah, come on, give it a try. Maybe your luck will change. You're new around here, aren't you? Yeah. Hey, Matt. Your taste's improving. Okay, I'll put it on. Can't cost me anything but money. Thanks. Get some pretzels from Gus, Billy. Okay. Hi, Gus. Hi, how are we doing? Not bad. Where are the pretzels? Up on that shelf. You can reach them better than me. What goes with those two anyway? How do you mean? They had a little love spat while we were closing up last night. I thought they were going to brain each other. Oh, that. <laughs> You'll get used to it. She likes to hit the bottle and it makes Matt see red. But don't let it throw you. She's still his wife, and nobody knows that better than Matt. How long have they been married? Oh, six or seven years. Matt used to work here. If it hadn't been for him, they'd have lost the place. Her old man was a real boozer, the worst kind. Like father, like daughter, huh? Yeah, I guess so. I keep out of it, though. That's the best way. And so will you if you're smart. I got my own trouble. Why don't you get rid of that piano and we'll both make a buck? I couldn't. Clancy wouldn't stand for it. Okay, I'll see you next week. Go on. All right. I'm sorry about last night. Forget it, I understand those things. She only gets that way when she's drinking. Sure, how's she feeling? Not too hot. She's not coming in tonight. Gonna stay in bed. Then I guess just you and me will be closing up tonight, huh? I'm getting blind. Well, don't expect me to lead you home. Everything okay? Couldn't be better. Uh, better bring us a couple more uh, on him. Again? I better start showing you how. You can give me lessons any time, Billy. No lessons from me, Buster. I don't play games. <laughs> hey, Billy, what do you want to hear? Same one. Aren't you tired of that song yet? I never get tired of it. It really sends me. Hello. Just a minute. I'll see if he's here. Clancy, your wife. One scotch in the rocks. One fifty. I'll hang it up, Matt.
that song remind you of? A hot romance or something? Nah. Could, though. You sure play it enough. I guess it's driving you kind of nuts, huh? I won't forget it in a hurry. Drives me kind of nuts, too, in a way. Makes me think about Mexico. You ever been there, man? Uh-uh. I sure want to go there. I want to go to the bullfights and sit in a little sidewalk cafe and drink wine and listen to music. I want to dance and make love and be serenaded and lay out in the sun all day and get tan. Not too tan, though. They like blondes with fair skin down there. Just a minute. It's all right with me if you want to sleep all day, but I got my own work to do. And a good morning to you, too. The rent's due. The new week started this morning. I'm surprised you didn't give it to a collection agency already. And if it ain't too much trouble, Miss Nash, don't play your phonograph so loud. I've been getting complaints from the other tenants. I realize you have a very exclusive clientele here. Pass my apologies along to the country club set. Still now, I'm almost through. I don't think you got it tight enough. Well, I'll take it in a little more when I sew it. Don't think I've forgotten about the $20 I owe you, Charlie, but I just had to get another change for the job. Oh, I'm not worried about that, Billy. There. Now, be careful of those pins when you take it off. I will. Did you uh, find out about your night off yet? Oh, I'll find out tonight. The boss said will tell me tonight. You know, there's a new show at the Spalding. When you find out tonight, I'll get the tickets. Great. Be sure to get the skirt tied up, will you, Charlie? Oh, I will. You know, if you'd rather, we could just go dancing and, and have dinner at the Coliseum. Oh, that's okay with me, if you'd rather do that. Do you think you can have the skirt ready tonight? Oh, I'll start on it right away. Now, I have no preference. We can go to either the Spalding or the Coliseum, whichever you say. Maybe we'll do both. Oh, that's a great idea. And I'll close the shop early that night. Be sure to have the skirt ready tonight, Charlie. I'll really need it. I will, Billy. Tell 
the old lady I get held up? <laughs> Hi. Hello. How's everything going, Miss Matt? I didn't do too good this first week. Oh, I see. All together with salary and tips, I made $57. $57? I can't help it if the tips aren't so good. Oh, of course. Well, maybe they'll improve. I hope so. Let's see, that makes your commission $19, right? That's right. Thanks. Uh, how about having a drink with me? Can't. It's against the rules. You've broken the rules before. Mercy me, buddy. I'm afraid I'll have to prevail upon your good nature for a little credit for the rest of the evening. Clancy, remember what your wife said. No more tabs. Oh, Matthew, you misunderstood the good woman completely. What she meant was no more tabs during... Oh, did she now? Yeah, as a matter of fact, just a night she said to me, Clancy, me darling, she said, why don't you go down to Matthew's place and have yourself... <laughs> reaching for something and slipped. Bannister, this girl assaulted me. You ever try that again, I'll really give you a working over. Beat it. Not just a minute, Bannister. Get out before I throw you out. Take it easy, Matt. I'd beat it if I were you, mister. What's going on? Nothing, Dora. This crumb bum made a pass at her. Oh, it's you. Look, do me a favor, will you? Don't come in here. Take your business someplace else. Gladly. You okay, honey? Sure, Dora. Is she okay? I thought she'd fractured his skull. I've never seen Matt so sore before. Me neither. Let me have another tray, will you, Matt? You dirty skunk. Take it easy. These guys got eyes and ears, you know. I should have broken his neck. I can't stand to have these guys even look at you. I know, hon. We've got to be careful of Dora. Who cares about Dora? Loaded again. I don't know where she gets the stuff. You haven't been serving her drinks, have you? You know I wouldn't do a thing like that. She must keep a bottle hidden. Why don't you have a ghost driver home? Guys? Yeah? Drive Dora home. What makes you think I want to go home? Because you're no good here. You can hardly stand on your feet. Ah, you make me sick, you and your nag. And you make me sick to my stomach. Come on, Gus, take me home. This place is beginning to bore me anyhow. Night, Billy. Night, Dora. See you tomorrow. I can't stand it. I can't stand the thought of you going home to her every night. It doesn't mean anything. We don't get along anymore. That's you and me go away together, man. Go away? Where? Mexico. We'll go to Mexico and we'll do all the things I told you about, just the two of us. Well, I can't leave just like that. What about this place? I got a big stake in it. Sell the place. Sell the place and we'll take the money and go to Mexico. Are you crazy? What do you mean, sell the place? What about Dora? What about Dora? You hate her, you know you do. She's nothing but a no-good lush and you hate her for her. I don't hate her and don't say she's no good. Dora's okay when she's not drinking. I wouldn't sell this place. It's half hers. She wouldn't have a quarter if it wasn't for you. I know all about how old man drank the place in the hot. You're talking like a lunatic, Billy. Now shut up and stop talking like that. I'm not going to sell this place and I'm not going to Mexico or anywhere else. Okay. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it. Where are you going? Home. I'm tired. You've got work to do. You love the place so much you do it. I'm tired and I'm going home. And another thing. You can look for a new girl at the end of the week. I'm quitting. Quitting? You stay in this hole you dug for yourself. But don't expect me to hang around till it's six feet deep. Oh, good evening, Billy. You're home a little early, aren't you? Stop keeping a timetable on me. I don't like it, see? Well, please don't be angry. I'm anxious to know if you found out about your night off. No, I didn't. I don't intend to. Now, get out and stop bothering me. But what about our date? You said... I don't care what I said. Get out of here and leave me alone, will you? Billy, I don't understand you. Do you think I'd go out with an undersized runt like you? Don't make me laugh. I wouldn't be caught dead with you. Don't you dare call me a runt! Run, run, run! You're nothing but a repulsive little runt. If you don't keep out of my hair, I'm going to step on you like a bug. Now, get out!
that... It's me, Matt. Can you come back in a little while? No, I want to see you right away. Okay, just a minute. see me a couple of months ago about buying a place. I'm gonna look him up. Come here. I couldn't sleep last night thinking about you. I'm so crazy about you, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, that's how it's with me, Matt. I gotta think of a way to sell without letting Dora know. Do you have to tell her about it? The name's gotta be on the papers. Why don't you tell her you wanna buy another place, a bigger place? Maybe she'd go for that. Uh, she's attached to this place because of her old man. She'd never agree to sell. There's another way, Matt. If you've got the nerve. Forge it. You sign her name to the papers. They put you away a long time for that. By the time they find out, we'll be in Mexico. No, they have ways of finding you. They'll trace you down there and bring you back. It's too much of a chance. What are we gonna do, hon? We're right back where we started. Give me a little time. I'll think of something. You and me together in Mexico. Can't you see how terrific it'll be, Matt? Yeah. But don't ever let me hear you talk about leaving again. I couldn't leave you, Matt. I couldn't leave if I wanted to. Hey, Doran, that stove's giving me trouble again. I thought the guy fixed it. Yeah, he fixed it so good I almost had a fire just okay, now. Okay, okay, I'll take care of it. Here's your check. What is this, my birthday or something? You gave it to me last night. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Don't you remember? You gave it to me when I brought you the meat bill. That's funny. They did all right. Here's the meat, Bill. Must have slipped my mind. Come take a look at that stove, will you? I don't want to be responsible for no accident. Okay, okay. Slipped her mind. So drunk she can't remember. Has this happened before? Plenty of times. When she's loaded, she can do anything. And getting her signature is no problem. A lot of things could happen. It's too risky. No, it ain't, Matt. There'll be a cinch to get her drunk. I know we can do it. Let me think about it. Your star is in its ascendancy during this period. That's this week. It is an excellent time to make business and financial transactions and new associations. Do not pro procrastinate or you may sacrifice valuable business opportunities. See, it's right here in the book under your sign. We've got to do it right away, Matt. I don't believe in that junk. It ain't junk. You'd be amazed at how many of these things come true. Some of the biggest people swear by it. Maybe I ought to talk to Dora. Maybe I can get her to sell. You know she won't. Besides, she might get why something's up. She's a pretty smart dame, you know. I could tell her I want a divorce. We could sell a place and split the money. She'll never let you go, Matt. Or else she'd grab all the dough. You think you can get her drunk enough to sign without reading the papers? Leave Dora to me. What if she gets suspicious about you slipping a drink? She haven't done it before. She won't get suspicious. I'll handle that. You get the papers and I'll get her signature. Well, I better go see Lowry. I told him I'd meet him at 11. You're sure he wants to buy the place? Yeah, he wants to buy. Good luck, hon. Don't keep Mr. Lowry waiting. I just put that refrigerator in about a month ago. It cost me nearly 500. Those booths take up a lot of room. Tables and chairs might be better. Yeah, but the crown I got, Lexon. Where do you grow some month? About 4,000 average. 
Take a look. Care for a drink? No, thanks. How come you're so anxious to sell all of a sudden? My wife hasn't been feeling too good. It's too rough on her. Maybe business has fallen off a little, too. You're looking at the figures. They're right up to date. Yeah, but how do I know they're right? Look, Larry, I don't like cracks like that. Well, what are you getting sore about? I was only kidding. I remember, though, you telling me it was your wife who was so set on not selling before. She changed her mind. Of course, the price you're asking is a little steep. It's a good buy at 30000 and you know it. Maybe it is, but I bought a couple other places since I saw you last. A little short on cash. Of course, you'd like to take 10 down and carry a mortgage. No, that's out. I want all cash. The best I can do is twenty two five. Maybe I can stretch it to 23 Stretch it to 25 and it's a deal. It's a deal. I'll get my lawyer to drop the papers. They should be ready Wednesday or Thursday. Make it Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday. I'll get to work on it. I'll see you, Bannister. So long, Larry. Now, Wednesday night, you go to work the same as usual. There'll be a big stink when you get there, and you're just as surprised as everybody else is that Larry's bought the place. And you're very sympathetic with Dora, see? But you're still worried about your job. Larry will keep you on. Don't worry about that. So you stay there a couple of days. Now you better make that a week. It'll look better. Then you get in the beef with Larry and quit and go back to Chicago. From there, take a plane to San Antonio, and I'll be waiting for you. Gosh, I'll die being away from you for a whole week, Matt. We gotta make this look good. Besides, I need this time to get us some papers to cross the border. Aren't you excited? Yeah. I'm excited. And a little scared, too. Me, too. But it'll be worth it, won't it? Wednesday at 4.55. Does your husband have transportation to the airport? Yes, I'm taking him. I hope he has a very nice trip. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, Matt. What? What happened? I don't want to talk over the phone. The whole deal's off, that's all. Did that party back out? Can't you give me an idea? She didn't find out, did she? Look, I told you I'm not going to tell you over the phone. Just get down to the place early tonight. Okay. It was a lawyer who gummed it up. He wants Dora to sign the papers in his office. Why don't you tell Larry she was sick or something? I tried that. He said he was willing to postpone it a few days. You could have said you were in a rush. I did, but then he got leery. He figured I waited all this time to sell. A couple of more days wouldn't matter. Why isn't her signature announced? I don't know. Maybe Lowry's wise to us. I'm going to phone him and call the whole thing off. What about us, Matt? Well, I got a few bucks. Not enough to go to Mexico, but we can go someplace. Maybe later we can go to Mexico. There's never any later, Matt. Believe me, I know. You bum around from town to town living in stinking furnished rooms and there's never any later. Look, I tried, didn't I? It didn't work. Laurie expects me to bring Dora to his lawyers at 11 o'clock tomorrow. What do you want me to do, hypnotize her? Dora! I wish she was dead. Don't talk like that, Billy. I wish she was dead and you do too. I can see your face when you look at her. Don't say that, don't say it. Why? Because it's true? You do, don't you? You do wish she was dead. The devil's for Dora. Keep feeding them to her. 150. I'm not calling Larry. I got something in mind. I'll tell you about it later. What is it? I can't talk now, can I? Where do we get a chance to be alone and keep feeding Dora? Is he 
be looking? No, he's busy at the other end. This one's on me. Thanks. I sure need it tonight. You're a pal, Billy. What would I do without you? I'll see you next time around. Billy's working too hard. Why don't you take a night off and have a good time for yourself? Thanks, Dora. I'd rather make the money. <laughs> a good-looking girl like you ought to find yourself a boyfriend. You're a good kid. You deserve it. Come on, Dora. Let's get going. Don't wait too long, Billy. Young ones like young girls, but the old ones like them even younger. It's getting late, Dora. Finish your drink. Ah, don't rush me. Don't rush me. Okay. Let's go. Give me a hand. Sure, anything. Tell me, what's it all about? You're going with me to the lawyer's office tomorrow. You're going to be Dora Bannister. Me? Be Dora? We'd never get away with that. Larry's never met Dora. He's never even seen her. You signed the papers just like you were her. Can you do it? Yeah, sure. I think so. No, you can't think so, Billy. You gotta know so. There can't be any false starts. You gotta know we don't try. What if something goes wrong? Well, that's a chance we take. But nobody would think we'd have the nerve to pull anything like this. Are you game? You bet I'm game. Good. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10. See you in the morning. Good night, darling. I'm not Farman. Now, don't forget, your legal name is Dora Farnham Bannister. That's F-A-R-N-H-A-M. Okay, l l let me try it again. My name is Dora Farnham Bannister. I was born in Pittsburgh, June 16th, 1920. The name of my parents was Sam and Dorothy Farnham. My mother died when I was a kid. I came to live here when I was 14 years old at uh, 1254 Dawson Street. I had uh, one brother, Roy. I had one brother, Roy, who was killed in the war. I now live at 868 Grand Avenue. We've been living there since we were married in May 1949. No, 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 no. That's when your old man died. We were married October 4th, 1946. All right, all right. You don't have to snap my head off. What's this going to be anyway, Aquisha? Billy, anything can happen in that office. One slip and we're dead. If you don't want to go through with it, say so. Look, we're both on edge. But let's not take it out on each other. Stop worrying. I'll handle it, okay? I'm sorry. We better get going. It's a quarter of 11. Got the deed? Yeah. Can hardly believe it. In a few hours, we'll be on our way to Mexico. Yeah. Boy, will I be glad to get out of this rat hole. Come on, we better take that down the back way. If the old lady sees us carrying it, she's liable to get nosy. Okay, let's go. You scared? I feel like I got an egg beater going around in my stomach. That makes two of us. Mr. and Mrs. Bannister are here. Have them come right in. Go right in, please. Well, right on the dot. Hi, Larry. I'd like you to be my wife. How do you do? You never told me you had such a nice-looking wife. This is my attorney, Bill Poyer. How do you do? The pleasure's mine. Glad to know you. Glad to know you. Won't you sit down? Will you have this chair, Mrs. Bannister? Sorry to get you out of a sick bed. This matter could have waited a few days. Oh, that's quite all right. I'm feeling much better now, thank you. These attacks come and go. 
Well, as long as I'm the lawyer for all parties, I like to know the principles involved. Oh, I understand. Yes, sir? Bring in the papers on the Lowry-Bannister deal. Yes, Mr. Porter. Right away. You and your husband planning a little vacation? We were thinking about it. I want to take her up to the Northwest. Say, that's good fishing up there. I've been there a couple of times. Do you fish? Well, I used to. Not lately, though. Mm -hmm. Ah, thank you. Now, this shouldn't take very long. I've drawn up a very simple agreement. Would you care to look at the papers? He's the businessman in the family. Very well. Are you uh, native to these parts? No, I was born in Pittsburgh. I came here when I was quite young, though. Fourteen, to be exact. Well, that makes you practically a native. Where did you go to school? I was never much interested in school. I quit after the 11th grade. I thought you'd tell me you graduated from Wilson High. Well, almost graduated. You see, Mr. Porter, you're revealing my secret past. <laughs> That's my error. So you went to Wilson, huh? I've got a boy going there now. I suppose you remember Mr. Rigby, the vice principal there? Who could forget him? <laughs> well, this seems okay to me. Yeah, me too. Good. Uh, do you have the deed? Now, if you will just sign these right here on the second line. And now the deed. Here. Thank you. Now, Mr. Bannister. I understand the bar has been in your family for years now. Yes, my father owned it, but he died about four years ago. Oh, that's too bad. Well, that does it. I think we both made a good deal. I'm satisfied. That's what I like to hear. Now, I'll put these papers in escrow right away, and you'll get your check just as soon as they come through. Escrow? Well, yes, uh, necessary routine in any transfer of property, clearance of title and such things, it won't take long. Well, how long? Oh, maybe ten days. But we wanted to start on our vacation right away. Maybe you could speed it up a little, Bill. Well, I could ask them to rush it at the bank as a personal favor, maybe three or four days, how's that? Swell. I've enjoyed meeting you, Mrs. Bannister. Same here. You too, Mr. Bannister. Thanks. See you, Larry. I'll keep in touch with you. Uh, give me a ring the first part of the week. I'll do that. Well, that's Mrs. Bannister. Too bad she doesn't go with the deal. Yeah. What's with this escrow business? Why don't you know about that escrow thing? Because I did. What do you think I am, a real estate agent or something? I never sold any property before. But I would have known this was going to happen. I never would have come. You said you wanted to go through with it, didn't you? Yeah, but I thought you knew what you were doing. I'm the one that signed Dorothy into the papers, not you. I'm the one that'll grant the forgery, not you. They hand out a pretty good rap for fraud, too. I mean, this as deep as you are. We're both into it up to our necks. Best thing we can do is get out of town. What? And leave that 25000 Nobody suspects anything yet. We've got to wait it out until the check comes through. Next couple of days, we'll be sitting on a pack of dynamite. Well, we've gone this far. We've got to go all the way. Come on, drive me to the ticket agency. I want to get a refund on that plane ticket. You know, you've got more guts than any dame I ever saw. Yeah? Yeah, just a minute. What do you want? I'm busy. I wouldn't be quite so snippy if I were you, Miss Nash. Don't you tell me how to be. Get out of here and stop bothering me. You change your tune when you find out what I know. Take your hand off that door. What do you mean, what you know? You'd better telephone your boss and tell him you won't be working tonight. 
What's the matter with you? You lost your marbles or something? You promised me we'd spend a little evening together, didn't you? Well, tonight you're going to keep that promise. I bought dinner for the two of us. So you better phone your boss and tell him you won't be working tonight. Or else, I might have a little talk with Dora Bannister. How do you know, Dora? You're wondering how much I do know, aren't you? Well, I overheard you two talking the other night when he brought you home. Oh, that didn't mean anything, Charlie. As a matter of fact, I don't even remember what we're talking about. I guess I was a little high. No, well, I remember. So you better make that telephone call. I've got to be at work tonight, Charlie. I'll lose my job if I don't. No, Billy. I don't think Mr. Bannister would fire you. It's terribly important that I be there tonight, Charlie. I'll tell you what. Why don't I come over to your place after work tonight and we'll have a late supper and a few drinks? How's that? You don't think I'm such a little runt now, do you, Billy? Of course not, Charlie. I was just in a bad humor. I didn't mean what I said. And you will show up, won't you? I will, I promise. Hmm. And you won't be late. I'll hurry. I'll be here just as soon as I'm through. I like you, Billy. I like you more than I've ever liked anyone before in my life. Mm. So, get here as soon as you can. I will, Charlie. What's the rush? Take it easy. You'll last longer. I'm in kind of a hurry tonight. What is it, a date? Oh, no, nothing like that. I just have a few things to do at home. What time is it, anyway? It's early at 2.20. I can finish up for if you want to beat it. That's okay, Dora. I'm just about through with these. Want to give me a shot, man? What, no lectures tonight? What do you know about that, Billy? No lectures. Next thing you know, he'll break down and have a couple himself. Care to join me? No, thanks, Dora. I have to hurry. Anything else you want me to do, Matt? I'm all through with those. Well, we can finish up. You can beat it. Night. Night, Billy. She can't fool me. She's got a hot date. Waiting for you, Billy. Come in. How we doing? Okay, Gus. With Dora. She had to go to a baby shower. She'll be down later tonight. Did you call the lawyer? Yeah. He said it'd be a day or two more. What's he trying to pull? He told us three or four days. He said they were busy at the bank. Maybe he's suspicious of something. Maybe he's wise of the whole thing. I feel like the top of my head's coming off just thinking about it. Take it easy, man. Every time somebody walks in that door, I break out in a cold sweat. Hey, Matt, that stove's still acting up. You told Dora about it, didn't you? Sure, I told her. I told her the other night, but she ain't done nothing about it. She probably forgot. Tell her again. I'm the one who has to stand over. It's liable to blow up in my face. Hello. Yeah. Okay. What time you be in? Sure. See you later. Larry. He's coming in tonight. Close the door and find out she's still at a friend's house. I called that place twice. I'm not calling again. Hi, Larry. Hello, Bannis. 
Mister, well, it looks like I'll be taking over tomorrow night. What do you mean? The lawyer said the escrow would take a couple more days. I spoke to him after I phoned you. He said he got a call from the bank. Everything will be ready tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Well, that's great. What are you drinking? Oh, it's scotch. Wish me luck. You'll do okay. A savage for a weeknight? A little slow tonight. Might pick up later. And your wife wants you. Help yourself. Thanks. The deal's going through. We get the check at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Call the house and find out if Dora's still there. I'll stick close to Laura. <laughs> Hey, Billy. Be back in a minute. Corned beef makes me very thirsty. Hi there. Oh, Mrs. Bannister, I didn't know you worked in the place. Hey, Billy. How about bringing us another round? Okay, coming up. Why don't you call me Billy? Everybody else does. Oh, I see. Sort of a nickname, huh? Yeah, I don't work regular. Just to fill in for our girl on the night off. Oh, I see. A friend of mine left the house and was on the way over. Should be here any minute. Hey, Billy! Okay, coming. Let me have two rides, will you? You seem to get along very well with the customers. Too bad you don't come with the place. We get a nice bunch in here. You're like our regular girl, though. She's real good. Yeah, I'm sure I will. Excuse me. What are you doing, neglecting us? You know I wouldn't neglect you, Marty. How about another drink? I think I'll have one more, then I'll shove off. When putting my brother-in-law in here to run the place, I'd appreciate if you'd drop in tomorrow night. So please, man. Why don't you keep that thing turned down? You want to blast everybody out of here? She acts like she owns the place. Oh, a box worse than a bite. Hey, daughter, what must a man do to get a drink around here? How do you usually get it? for it. Billy! Hey, Billy! Get Clancy here a drink before he collapses of thirst. I have a terrible thirst tonight. Terrible. How about you, Farrell? Yeah, hit me again. What's going on up front? Oh, nothing, Dora. Just an old friend of mine dropped in. One scotch on the rocks, one Irish whiskey. I'll bet that's the friend you've been rushing off to meet every night. Oh, no, really, Dora. It's just an old friend. <laughs> I know when you've got a hot day. Which one is he? One even. No, really, Dora, you got it all wrong. You're getting all flustered. Come on, I want to meet him. Hey, Dora, can I see you a minute? That stove's still on the plate. I was only joking. No, it's okay. I've got to get going. I'll see you at the bank tomorrow. Two o'clock, right? Yeah. Good night, Bannister. So long, Larry. Night, Mrs. Bannister. I'll probably see you at the bank tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be there. Don't forget to drop in when you get back from your vacation. I won't. What's this about a vacation? Oh, this is a friend of mine, Mr. Lowry. Hello. I guess we'll be seeing a lot of you. Yeah, I guess you will. Well, I gotta be running along now. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, good night. Good night. You can do better than that, Billy. I think I could go through that again. I must have lost 20 pounds when she walked up to Lowry. I could use a shot, man. You sure earned it, baby.
Night, Billy. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Me, Charlie. Just a minute. Hello. I didn't hear you come in. Were you trying to avoid me? Oh, no, I thought you were asleep. You knew I wasn't asleep, Billy. I've been waiting for you. You knew I'd be waiting for you, didn't you? Sure, Charlie. Shall we, uh, have a little nightcap? Yeah, let's. That whole kitchen's got to be repainted. The insurance will cover it. You got your key to the safety deposit box? Yeah. Why? Let me have it. I don't remember what I did with mine. What do you want it for? What do you think I want it for? I want to open that box and read that insurance policy in the morning. Well, you don't have to do that. Just call the company. They'll send out an adjuster. Look, I know what I'm doing. One of those clauses reads the way I think it does. We're going to get some new linoleum out of this. Just give me the key. Come on, let's get out of here. I'm tired. I think I'll stay around and take inventory. Again? You just took it a few weeks ago. I think I made a mistake. I want to check it. Well, you can do it alone. I'm not hanging around here to take inventory at this hour. If you had any sense, you'd get some sleep and do it tomorrow. I'm not sleepy. Besides, I, I feel like doing it tonight. Suit yourself. Put that away in the drawer. And try to walk softly when you come in tonight. No more for me, Charlie. I'm awful tired. Are you trying to get rid of me, Billy? No, it's just that I had a rough night, that's all. You were trying to avoid me tonight, weren't you? You shouldn't do that, you know, Billy. You should be nice to me. Real nice. I told you I liked you a lot, didn't I? I know, but you don't like me. You're afraid of me, aren't you? Why should I be afraid of you, Charlie? Don't be afraid of me, dear. Please, please don't be afraid of me. my breath.
I was a chum. Drop it, will you? I'm sick of hearing about it. Well, that's tough. You're going to hear about it, and you're going to hear about it plenty. I thought you had half a brain in that head of yours when I married you, but I guess I was wrong. Look, I told you I was wrong, and I'm sorry. What more do you want me to do? Cut my throat? That's not a bad suggestion. Oh, please, leave me alone for a minute, will you? No, I won't leave you alone. Well, I've talked it over with my client, and uh, he's agreed to forget the whole deal. I don't know why we're so good to him, Mr. Lowry. He doesn't deserve it. Thanks, Lowry. You too, Porter. That's okay, Bannister. I guess we all make prize suckers of ourselves once in a while. Yeah, except this is the prize sucker of all time. This is the champion dope of the world. Oh, you lay off and let your mouth rest for a minute. You're giving me a headache. Well, you give me an ache, too. I should have listened to what my father told me. All right, all right. So you should have listened to your father. By the way, I wonder whatever happened to the other Mrs. Bannister. How much is the ticket to New York? One way a round trip. One way. Fifty-three fifty. Where can I go for twenty-five bucks? Well, let's see. The fare to St. Louis, twenty-four seventy-five, and to Kansas City, twenty-three fifty. Either one doesn't matter. Well, there's a bus leaving for Kansas City in five minutes. Make it Kansas City. That'll be twenty-three fifty. One way to Kansas City. Here you are, miss. That's your bus there. 